What's up, everybody? We are live. It's been a minute. I know you guys are excited. We're excited to be here. Show a little love in the chats. We got Jay over here on at midnight while his wife's asleep, so that's pretty damn cool. We're grateful for him taking the time out. We're going to get ourselves some exciting updates. So without further ado, since we are, yeah, we're already over the four, uh, the four o'clock mark, let's talk about the Probably the most buzzing thing I'm hearing in the community. Everyone's dying to hear about those validators. And we know you've been working on the dashboard and stuff. So why don't we kick off with uh, some good updates about where that stands and kind of what the upcoming near-term horizon looks like. Uh, sure. So uh, our basic lift right now is getting the dashboard up so that uh, you guys have some uh, interchangeable activity with the validators themselves. Uh, the code's up. It's ready to uh, deploy. There's no visibility uh, for the average consumer yet. So unless you read tech code, it's not going to give you much. So the dashboard is really going to basically be nice. So someone can just walk in. They see the, the fundamentals of what they're looking for. Um, all the staking rewards and all that is technically in the code, but having a very simple way to see it is important for a lot of people right now uh, in this first round because you're not uh, not everybody is, is tech savvy and, and understands how to even read code. And so uh, we're trying to basically make it uh, user friendly. Uh, we want to be able to have these things uh, be able to be pulled up on your desktop at home or on your laptop. Um, to have full visibility and full transparency of when your validators are up, when they're down, your uh, your history in the last uh, seven days. If you had any issues, uh, if you have, then you'll know to basically contact your service provider. Uh, since a lot of these are going to be doing uh, white glove service or just a standard third party hosting through another facility. So we want to make sure you guys have that data point set um, and ability to monitor uh, your assets. So I think it's it's important and then we're probably in the 70 to 75 percent uh, lift done already. Um, I'm hoping to be able to polish that off here in the next 24 hours for everybody to get those still hit the deadline of up this week. Um, that was our goal is have everybody up by Friday. I think we still have a good shot at getting it done. Um, so right now that's that's our goal. And that's what we're shooting for. Worst case scenario, there will be a lot more that come online this week because we are going to start having the uh, the data centers we know that they're at start putting them up. You just may not have visibility, but we need them up. And so whether you can read code or not, you may actually have them going live um, and then the dashboard may kick in on Monday so you can actually see what's going on. So that's the update right now on validators. All right. So right now it's mostly just a user, face, it, uh, user interface issue. Mainnet is live, but for everyone just to make sense of the staking, the delegating, all that stuff, that, that, that's the part that everyone's still waiting on. So this week, friends, are you hearing that? That's, that's, that's exciting. I'm pumped. I prefer Friday, but I'll settle for Monday. Very nice. Very nice. We are, we are main net. We are main net. We are live, and we are uh, we are up. So that's uh, that's a big thing. So now being able to have everybody see a, a good user interface, I think, is important, and uh, we'll we'll do our best to get that out before the weekend. Very very nice. Uh, so before we hit that live button, you also said that a few other things have hit the Android store. Did you want to touch on a few of those main points right away? Yeah, so uh, Lemflix has uh, now been officially uh, pushed off. I, I've got a, a few builds. Uh, I want to start by a little bit of apology on this. Uh, we are having some new uh, dev teams come on board. They are around the world. Um, there are some cultural things I'm, I personally am trying to get my head wrapped around and having a better understanding of. Um, when I'm told something is done from my uh, usual team, um, that means it's done done. Um, Sometimes in culture, when they say it's done, that basically means they can get it done. It's not the same thing to me. And so uh, there was some communicational issues. It is a new team, uh, but that is now done, done. And it is being submitted. In fact, it already was submitted yesterday to Android uh, to get that particular one done. The other uh, ones that went in today is uh, LemPay went into Apple and Android um, uh, today. So. Apple will take longer. I'm going to preference everybody on that. But Android is running about five to six days out right now for app uh, deployments. So I do uh, suspect that uh, we'll be able to see these things next week and uh, you guys can start running, uh, pay for your subscriptions and go. Once we get an approval, that does not mean it'll be up. Once we get the approval, you can actually go to the website and you actually can start doing the subscription for Lemflix. Uh, we're hoping to get that to a point where I can announce uh, some good news before the weekend. So hopefully you guys can do a little bit of uh, movie trivia and uh, get to the point where you can actually watch some stuff and stream some stuff this weekend. So 
uh, that's where we're at in those two projects. You know, it's very cool. Ever since uh, the first time I saw that original Lemflix graphic, I just thought it was brilliant. And I think a lot of people have been dreaming of the day where they sit down on the weekend and actually watch some content. So that's that's very exciting. This, these things have been close for a long time. So it's nice to have them actually live, which leads us to the thing. One of your criteria has always <laughs> been that once the project itself is live physically for consumers to use, that generally coincides with at least being a good time for listing. So are there any updates on the XT front? Yeah, so um, XT is ready to go. Uh, they've actually been pounding us a little bit. So what everybody needs to understand is we actually have two uh, different products right now. We have a uh, LemX token and we have a LemX coin. I will tell you that we actually already have LemX coin and every single validator will be getting five of those uh, in uh, their validators. So understand we will be contacting every validator in order to activate it. You're going to have to stake your coin, not token, um, which means you'll be the first ones over on the bridge, which means you'll be the first ones physically to uh, activate and turn them on. Uh, there's more functionality to a validator than most people understand, but right now you don't have to do anything until you get your email on how to functionally make it work, how to use the bridge and, and move over uh, uh, five Lemex and, and get your new stuff in your same wallet and then put that on your validator to activate it. You just need to understand there's a process to it. There will be uh, some simple steps. We're making it as user-friendly as possible, but you guys will be the first ones with the new live coin because uh, you need those in order to turn your validator on. So um, that uh, has happened for nine. Don't get upset. Those nine are internal. Uh, we are playing around with it right now. We're trying to make sure that everybody has a good flow and a good uh, user manual to basically get this done. So uh, we'll probably have a few people uh, probably that are uh, here today. And probably I'm going to put and have uh, Mike do one as well, because if we can get the average man to be able to put it through, then I feel like we've uh, uh, we've got it done. And I think Mike talks pretty basic language to most people. So everybody kind of understands the the non-programmer talk of how how things run he breaks it down to uh, a, a level that most people can understand so if i can get mike through it and i can get terry through it from a tech side i think i'm doing pretty well and i think we'll be able to do both of those uh to a point where they can now walk everybody through it and uh get that going but the user manual coming back out from the validators perspective should it's going to be five steps. It's it's not difficult. Uh, we should just get to the point where you guys have those five steps and you can do them with your service provider. Very, very cool. And so speaking of which, onto the subject of the bridge, I know that you guys have already got the majority of our bridge built. And maybe we just give people the gist. Friends, do not panic. There's You're not being left behind. But just the gist of what that bridging process is going to look like and a rough timeline of when they might be uh, starting to pay attention to that. So sure. So everything is migrating in the month of September. So I need to put that out there that uh, this has always been a plan for a whole month. Um, and so we're just at the beginning of it. We've got plenty of time left, but we do need to start getting these things uh, over the hurdle. So what we're doing is we are starting off with integrating with a third party company for the coin uh, and for the token. Um, that is a lot easier lift uh, to go to a third party for. The NFTs, we actually were in the process of building out a substrate anyway. Um, and so we basically are having all the NFTs run through something internal to save fees. Uh, this is something that uh, we looked at, we had an option, but we realized the cost was just so astronomical for people um, that we're trying to basically bring those down. And so um, we, we have it uh, in the test net running, you know, uh, three bucks or a little bit under, I hope to surprise everybody. Uh, but understand that is uh, the process right now of kind of running through test net and then going on live net. You just don't know what chains are going to run at. But but we are trying to stay in that uh, three dollar uh, area instead of five, which uh, obviously we can save everybody, you know, uh, 35, 40 percent. I'm sure everybody will be very tickled pink about that. So in in that period, it is uh, slowing things down about a week to 10 days. Um, but I think it's worth the time and effort to save that kind of money for the whole community. So um, I'm going to say that uh, that is probably going to be towards the third week of September. Uh, and we will basically be shutting everything down on Binance, just giving everybody time to get prepared for it, get everybody time to get their Lemex situated. 
uh, because we are doing a bridge internally, this will mean that the, the heavy lift on fees will be out of Lemex. Uh, the light fees will be out of uh, BNB. And so it's not going to be 50-50. It's going to be more towards that 70-30 um, range and maybe even 80-20. Uh, and so um, I want kind of everybody to understand we're really trying to make this as, as painless as possible for individuals and bring the cost as low as possible. Uh, but the validators need to get paid for doing their process on the other side. So you got to understand that it is going, but it's going to the community once it gets there. Um, the bridge obviously is a, a part of that from the Binance side. We can't do anything about the Binance. We're not big enough to say Binance, make it free or anything like that. It's a standard processing and getting it through. But because we're building the bridge, we can make it very, very cost affordable uh, for everybody. Uh, we've got to take care of the validators. But other than that, we're, we're trying to make this thing a pass through. So that so really the $2 savings is coming from the bridge because we're building one instead of making you guys go through a third party. Very nice. Are we willing to set a date for, <laughs> for when all of the distributions will pause where we get the time stamp that's required to migrate? No, because what I don't want to have happen is I do not want to have anything like V2 happened, where uh, we felt we were 90% there, um, the dev teams changed, something happens, uh, bottom line is people were off for way too long. Um, I don't want to shut down until I 100% know we can come out the other side of it with a very fixed window. I want these things back up, I want them uh, distributing, and I want you guys to be able to draw them uh, as quickly as possible. So. Um, I won't be in a position where, and my partners won't be in a situation where we have you guys shut down for 20, 30, 40, 50 days accidentally because it wasn't ready. It's just not something we'll do. We'll push if we have to. Uh, so dates are very uh, sensitive uh, when we don't have the other side figured out 100%, meaning it's not done, done. Uh, it's done, but it doesn't mean it's done, done. And so I think for the best benefit of the community, we just won't do it. Yeah, done, done, depending on certain cultures and their definition of the word done. I got you. Very good. So uh, a lot of people have also been asking, what, when is it going to, I don't kind of look and feel real to the validators in terms of, let's say, when they would start to see maybe some small delegated uh, staking kind of going on and stuff. Is that more like an October deal? Um. No, actually, I think you guys will start seeing it immediately when the bridge is open, because I think what's going to happen is the bridge gets open. You're going to have founders token pop over uh, relatively quickly and you guys are going to see the delegation uh, going. There's a commitment to these initial validators. And so uh, it won't be long. Um, I'm going to say probably uh, in the first day of that uh, downtime, you're going to see some movement uh, over to get these things uh, staked up and to live up to our commitments. Uh, you'll also start seeing your uh, your gas fees come in. You'll also start seeing a lot of your uh, internal stuff um, on your dashboard that's you know being built right now. You'll see the live interactions of this happening in real time. And so uh, I think the validators are going to get very excited. I think they're going to start seeing. Wait a second, this is just this is just migrating. What, what's going to happen when daily trainings happen? What's going to happen when the dexes are taking place? What's going to happen when we have new mintings? Guys, it's going to get fun, and and you guys will have the first you know front row seat to it. Uh, purely because you guys are participating in chain and building it out. Very, very, very cool. Ooh, that's exciting. Everyone take a deep breath on that one. That's that's exciting to be a validator right now. I'm, uh, a lot of people are going to be very happy that they chose to do that. And if it's just the beginning, but at least it feels real and tangible. Question for you on that front. A lot of people are trying to imagine what the dashboard would look like and where or, or how they will access it. Is this going to be integrated into Lemon Tree? Or is this going to be a separate kind of login portal? So it will be a, a separate login portal uh, for the time being. It will be integrated in uh, with a user DAP, maybe even a separate app just for uh, validators because it, it needs to give separate alerts uh, for you. Like when you're down, it, you need to be able to get push notifications for that. You need to have more interaction with it. And so, um, we want to make sure that you guys have that uh, frontline uh, seat to be able to see the plays. But also, if there's a problem, you guys need to be able to be notified about it pretty quickly. So convoluting it with another app, we've looked at it, but some people put price alerts. Some people have, you know, those types of things in, like, the Lemon Tree, for instance. We have trade alerts. We have price alerts. We have all kinds of things being built in there for push notifications. We don't want to be convoluted because the risk of losing a validator is 
is, is, is very high uh, if you don't know about it. We want people to know about it. We want people to be paying attention. So I think it will be a separate uh, on its own uh, derived app eventually. Uh, but right now it's going to basically be a uh, user on the dashboard and with you'll have uh, pull down alerts. Um, and we're trying to put text notifications in right now until we get a full interactive app. I think text notifications is a great solution anyway. I mean, that, that definitely works for now. I think that'd be great. So separate login, all right. And it'll be very user friendly. It'll be, you know, user interface something you guys are used to all GUI, clicking, dragging, you know, that kind of stuff. It's all going to be easy, friends. So for those of you who've been panicking, take a deep breath. It's all going to be good. You will learn it all in time. Jason, I have, I have actually released a couple of those, uh, those pictures and outlines. Uh, so they are floating around. Um, and so um, I can make sure that uh, those get put together for, uh, for everybody to see back on the chat. Uh, so you guys know the ground. It, it is plug, point, and play. We, we, we can really have made this uh, as simple and easy as possible. Even when you're starting to delegate a uh, token, um, you guys have kind of seen that slide um, estimator. One of those is on the validator for your own stake token as well. And so it, it really is going to be interactive. You guys will be able to see what uh, the estimates are before you do it. And you'll be able to see what your estimates are by people delegating on your uh, on your validator as well. So I think it's going to be very fun. You can stake uh, directly on it with one click of a button. Uh, you can withdraw with one click of a button. You can compound or what's called restake uh, with one click of a button. Um, those will be done on the on the size of blocks and the amount of blocks cut, uh, coming through. In test net, it's going it's, it's about every three to four days you'll be able to basically hit that uh, that restake button if you would like. Um, it will get faster and faster as blocks are turning, uh, but right now it's it's going to click between that three and four day mark. Um, but with 500 L twos, it's probably on a daily basis. Very cool. Uh, well, if you want to send any previews, I know it's a very late over there, but if you want to drop them in my inbox, I'll propagate them over multiple channels if you'd like. Um, yeah. So uh, what else do we want to ask here? Um, you, I see you've got a great, cool picture. Looks like a Lem Games picture to me. Did you want to touch on that today? Oh, by the way, Lem Games is done. We're, uh, uh, we're kind of about that one. Um, it is something that... Uh, we have been uh, somewhat uh, hesitant back and forth. Are we going to let it go? Are we going to hold it back? Um, we're going to let it go and uh, and have a good time with it. And I think it's going to probably coincide with some of the migration uh, items, but we're going to let it go out. We're going to let uh, distribution start. We may pause it relatively quickly, but uh, we have so much stuff in the pipe already. We just can't really delay uh, some of these projects and that getting out. Like I said, I think three or four weeks ago, I told you guys, we have about 50 sitting back. Guys, that's not the number anymore. Um, and so it, it is it is starting to become very problematic by holding these things off just because we have this or trying to hit the right dominoes. We just need to basically let things go when, they, when they're ready. And so um, that's, that's basically our motto now moving forward is if it's ready, we're going to push it out to the public. And what, what estimated timeline might people see this show up on the DAP? Um, I have a feeling this will be up before the weekend, and I have a feeling that uh, white papers that will be situated and new logos and designs and NFT uh, previews will start popping through the chat relatively quickly. Very cool. Very cool. More token distribution. Um, recently, you, you mentioned that there might be four uh, new projects that were coming pre-migration. Is there a fourth one that you wanted to discuss, or is that not going to happen at this point? Um, that is going to be depending on what happens next week. If we get validator dashboards out before the weekend, I actually think we'll be in migration uh, during it. I don't want to have anybody uh, minting a bunch of NFTs that they just have to basically pay a migration for. Immediately. So um, when the pause basically happens, there's no sense in releasing something during that pause. We're just going to have a pile up and we'll probably have three or four ready to go on the other side. We're back home. Very sick. Very cool. So let's let's just go in a little scenario game here if the validators are ready this weekend friday saturday um is it likely that we potentially just hit hit, hit the pause button for the timestamp and migration starting next week is that a possibility uh possible by next uh, a week from uh thursday tomorrow but my guess is it probably will be a couple days past that all right that's still pretty good that sounds really exciting i like it Lem Games. Uh, and is there an ETN when the Lem Games might be usable from the consumer uh, standpoint? 
it's ready. So when we hit publish and, and go, we try to line these things up uh, as they're going live, not necessarily when minting happens, but before uh, they go to a, an exchange. So when, we, when withdrawals happen and the public will start listing, that's usually when we try to have the product up, ready to go so that there's revenues in uh, right when listing is basically happening or right uh, close to it. So uh, that is the goal uh, for all of these. Some of them are already existing businesses. So that's you know kind of a moot point, but anything that's new and being created either as a uh, sideline or a subsidiary product, um, we're basically trying to get that launched right around the same time as the public will list. Uh, I know some people have needed to rent uh, defibrillators temporarily while they're waiting for Lemflix to list. You mentioned earlier that it was going to the Play stores. Did you want to appease some of these people so they don't die of heart attacks as to a rough timeline for when, when they should be looking for Lemflix? They don't have to ask every day in the group. <laughs> so, so let me tell you how these things work. And if you read the light paper, you'll actually, uh, you already know the answer. You ask all the time, well, when are you listing it? When are you listing it? When are you listing it? I got really good news for everybody. We aren't ever going to list it. Uh, the public lists it. Uh, these are your guys' projects. And once you guys actually understand that, um, it's going to start flowing a lot easier. We do have some very big leaders uh, and some large NFT holders that uh, will be doing it uh, at the beginning. But this is something that everybody gets to play with. Now, what does happen is a smart contract with more liquidity uh, that gets uh, dripped in. And so uh, the, the, every 90 days, you have another 8 million token that basically goes into the ecosystem to basically widen the base. Why does it do that? to slow the volatility down. These things are gonna be volatile at the beginning. And the more and more time that they're out, the less and less volatile they're gonna be. Uh, it's it's pretty standard uh, market analysis anyway. Uh, you can go back to pink sheets, uh, pink sheet type things. You can go back to, you know, really uh, even a new car, you drive it off the lot, it, it drops immediately. That doesn't mean if you hold it, you have low miles on it, it's not gonna go back up. It's just, it's just price fluctuation right at the beginning of anything is, is a little volatile. And so my suggestion is take a deep breath, figure out where the market's going to hold it at. We are still training people to put liquidity in, but the nice thing is all the tokenomics are designed to fix whatever the heck the NFT holders do. So here's the secret. If no one goes out to the market and sells, the market's only going to go up. If everybody goes out to the market and sells, the market is going to go down, but the NFTs uh, holders are in charge of that liquidity. So it's just flooding the market of token before the royalties and that can come in, before the uh, buy and burn trust can come in uh, and take it back out. And the liquidity is going to start dribbling in the second it's listed and it goes every single 90 days, you have another 8 million token coming in. It will make the pain a lot, lot less. You just got time to kind of work through. So if responsible NFT holders are out there, be slow, be cautious, and everybody wins. If you have a major drop, what you're really doing to yourself is the EGI pools are going to burn very, very, very quickly. Because the lower the price of the token gets, the more token gets burnt and then matched by the EGI. If you are responsible NFT holders, these token almost will last you years. If you're not, these things will last 30 days. So understand, um, it's just, it's all up to you. This is, you guys want a decentralization. This is about as decentralization as you could possibly get. Uh, and so I, I think it's gonna be fun to kind of watch. It's never been done in crypto. It's never been uh, fully given away uh, to the world. And and this is this is really my dream is giving it away. So guess what? It's it's happening and uh, we're here. We're gonna find out if I'm crazy or, or if it's the best idea uh, in the world for blockchain. And I, and I think it's gonna be very fun. Yeah, I think it's more of the latter than the former, which is very exciting. Uh, it's, it's a great place for all of us to be. I've seen a couple of questions pop in the chat that, that probably do make sense to ask. Uh, will there be a warning for when NFT swaps become final? Um, yes. So uh, we will pretty much try to give everybody about a three-day window to when the uh, system is going to drop. That is your warning. Uh, the same time that we basically pause everything for the 10-day window will be the exact same time that all swaps will be done forever. So 
um, it, we're going to correlate them the same. Uh, so just understand that uh, if I give you guys the, you know, three day warning that, you know, we're going to turn everything off and pause everything for the bridge. Uh, it's the same exact time frame for any swaps whatsoever at all. So please, please, please take that it's not as a warning. I am shutting it off for a reason. It is done. Got it. All good. Um, someone said uh, they wanted an update about the Lempay KYC because it sounded like the first one was a little on the rigid side and, and you were entertaining other options. Has there been any updates on that front? Uh, yeah. So we actually have um, a ton of back bank, bank statements. A couple of the items in that um, are getting out. We are opening up more uh, jurisdictions uh, and that with the current provider. We have another provider uh, that will be starting um, around October 1st. Uh, if if we need to, uh, this one's under contract right now to run through the end of the month. But these are banking uh, items. You need to understand this is not like it's uh, you know you're just buying a, a Netflix series or a credit card. Uh, you are moving money, which means you have AML. We are trying to make sure we also have to deal with uh, keeping LemPay and LemBank in good standings with central banks because we are getting leverage. We are making sure this is a value for everybody long term for lending. So we don't want to be in any situation where you know we are uh, we have any malicious activity happening in the banking front. So these are the partners. This is not me. I don't run uh, LendPay, uh, but they are very strict on compliance. We are trying to lighten them up with the blockchain side of it and, and trying to go towards industry standards. We've looked at uh, three other competitors in the space, and I believe a very large acquisition that. Uh, is in the process of, of closing down um, will help that front. Um, and so uh, it is a direct uh, acquisition for Lempe um, and they are bringing their own internal uh, processes and they've been in the industry a very, very long time. So I think this is going to help lighten up everybody's anxiety a lot. Um, and I think it's gonna help the, the process smooth out a lot. You, uh... I mean, one thing that might be easier if it's possible, and I'm not sure if it is or not, but maybe more of a delineation between LemPay. I think a lot of people kind of see that as like the Venmo, kind of like the Cash App side of things versus the Lem Bank. And maybe if there's more delineation there, maybe maybe one would be easier. But I don't know if that's something to maybe we could look into over time or not. But so it's a thought. It, it, it is. The, the difference is when you basically go through this once, what's happening is you're actually going through for Lem Bank. Lem Pay, Lem Lotto, Lem Casino. Some of these I don't need for Lem, Lem Lotto. It's it's not it's not a restricted service, but Lem Casino is in certain jurisdictions. So you're basically going through for other reasons. You have um, the same login for almost all of these services. So what's happening is you, you are going in through Lem Pay, but so you don't have to do KYC twice. We're basically having to lock everything down as if you're going in right to the bank day one. And so what we've looked at is itemizing, itemizing these out. So it's really light on some, and then you don't have to basically go through on, on others. And you don't have to do any KYC on, on a lot of the products. And so it's, it's just kind of a happy balance of saying, okay, look, this one probably does need to be more stringent here because you're moving large cap uh, money. Um, but in Lempe, understand you can move $4 million through there. It's not like a small limit. Um, the bank doesn't have a limit. And so when you're basically running that type of KYC, you're doing it as if Terry is going to go ahead and run $4 million tomorrow. And so because there is no limit to say Terry can't run $4 million tomorrow. And so um, it is a little more strict and stringent right now. Where we're trying to build that balance of, OK, maybe we shouldn't do Lem Bank for everybody. Maybe what we should do is really tone this back for some of the third party services. And that that's why we're talking about bringing another service provider in for some of the products to light it up a little bit. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be great. Um, so speaking on, on Lempay, while we're on that subject, you alluded to a partnership contract that, uh, you know, has been in discussion for many weeks, but it sounded like the deal got finalized. Are you uh, willing or able to discuss that at, at a little more in depth at this time or not? Well, considering my partner did already, I won't get into the details of it, but I will tell you that uh, we are a service provider for a major company at this point, and the name is Alibaba. Uh, but we're not going to get into the details of how it's going to work, how it's going to function. Um, 
because if I did, it's going to show you actually how big it is. And it's very exciting. We're going to let the time be correct and that to maximize that. And we actually have an acquisition we're trying to announce uh, even before that. And so um, everything has its time. Everything has its window. Uh, but uh, since his excellency kind of uh, dropped that last week, I'll go ahead and throw it out there. But that's where we'll stop. Uh, it is it is very, very exciting, guys. And the transactional um, uh, volume on these types of partnerships are are insane and so it's going to be a very fun time for uh, everybody with uh, uh, lempe nfts but don't sit on your hands this still means you need to go out there and refer them you still need to go out there and share it um, this is your responsibility so just because we're doing stuff uh, on our side doesn't get you off the hook you need to make sure that you're doing your part to make sure that the uh, the rewards in that uh, coming back through are something that you're earning which is going out there and sharing and using the product and sharing and using the product and sharing using the product i saw that uh, a lot of people today in the group seem to felt like the winds of uh, of, of good fortune have kind of had swept them swept their way when they logged into the dap today <laughs> Which leads me yeah. to the next question. It looked like there was some kind of transition going on there. And a lot of people have been very anxious about said transition. So when are those four new projects looking like they're sliding over? So a couple things about what happened. Um, we had an API break, uh, mainly because of something else that was totally um, out of the sidelines. Uh, the main liquidity token for every single one of these uh, brought down and it got so low that deck screener stopped providing service to the APIs. So what happened is it collapsed down to the default and the default right now is one one hundredth of uh, everything else on the on the DAP. So understand that uh, that is not where these things are going to be listed at. They're going to be listed at the current prices uh, that they are right now. But because of the pairing token uh, basically being uh, delisted from DEX because the liquidity has, has been drained to nothing, um, it, it basically caused other problems around uh, around the APIs. So uh, that is being fixed uh, currently right now. Um, you may see a pairing because of that uh, to bring it back up sooner than we would have uh, done. But having said that, uh, give it a 24 hour window and we'll be back to normal land. But isn't it exciting to see stuff like that happen? And then I can say that uh, with good fortune, with some time, the tokenomics uh, will do their thing. Uh, even those four projects after the move over, I will tell you, uh, because there's no more distribution coming for those projects and kicking them out, it's going to be um, something that those projects are going to have a head start to what every project will eventually do. Some of those projects just have less token in the full circulation um, than the new ones even. And some of them have a lot more. And so uh, what people do with them will be very interesting. I think it'll be a, a fun experiment, I guess. Uh, but I think it's I think it's fun. I think it's um, I think it's going to be a very exciting ride. So we'll just put it that way. Well, speaking of liquidity, is, is there an ETA for when we might see a LEM loans and LEM pairing? Is that is that going to be like a pre-migration, a post-migration? Do we have a, an estimate at this time? We are looking at that for a particular reason we were not prepared for, um, but but understand it could come it could come in the next twenty four to forty eight hours. So yes, Ooh. it's something that uh, we were not planning on doing that until the L one migration. Um, we are looking at the best way to um, uh, to wait. Quite honestly, uh, instead of having a bunch of liquidity pools sitting around, we got to basically yank out and pull over. Um, but this. This may be the time we're either going to reach out to a couple of our large uh, NFT holders to create the pairing uh, and put it up there for right now, or we'll go ahead and uh, do it ourselves, knowing that we'll just basically migrate it over to the correct decks um, after migration. Well, that is very, very exciting. So very cool. Uh, someone was also asked, uh, no, the, the next validators will be more like an October thing, friends. So for those who are asking that. Uh, trying to, there was something else I wanted to ask. So Lemflex will be coming out very soon. We got other things moving over. We got new acquisitions and partnerships on the payment side. We're almost ready for the migration. Dashboard's almost ready. And we got a lot of exciting stuff about to come. So what else is happening maybe perhaps behind the scenes that uh, some of us are not asking about uh, because you haven't put any drips in? Maybe you have a few bombs you want to drop. I'm going to actually drop some pretty big ones. Um, you know, 
we're talking about a lot of uh, size acquisitions, uh, even for Lempe. Uh, that's a hundred million dollar acquisition, guys. That's that's not uh, that's not a small deal. And everybody's like, oh, well, that's got to be Mega Lemon. No, that's not Mega Lemon. That's actually for Lemon. Um, but I will tell you, Mega Lemon right now is uh, actually taking a lot of the time and energy behind the scenes. Um, the the deals coming in are massive. I kind of dropped the size of some of these categories uh, in the chat a little bit earlier today, but these sectors are massive, and uh, you know I think uh, I think a lot of the the big wigs around the financial industry are finally starting to wake up. You know, you've got the CEO of of uh, JP Morgan, uh, Jamie Dimon, uh, kicking around. You've got BlackRock um, that he's been pretty out of it. it's a ten trillion dollar market. I think he. Uh, ate his own shoe. He's now talking about a $500 trillion market. Um, so I can tell you that, guys, this is this is a market that is all going to be digitized eventually. It is not a matter of if it's going to happen. It's a matter of when. So I want to make sure everybody understands that Mega Lemon is there to support that uh, fostering of technology and that fostering of um, the tidal wave that is coming. And so when we're talking about infrastructure, we're talking about uh, instead of issuing standard bonds to the market, um, municipality bonds, you're going to be doing this over blockchain. When you're talking about seaports, you're talking about fractionalizing them, you're talking about railroads uh, roads and uh, railways. You got to understand that, that stuff is millions and millions, if not hundreds of millions, a mile. And so when you look at how many rail ties uh, you drive by when you're on the freeway um, or look over the side, uh, of your uh, roadway and you see all these intersections with, with railway this all is assets that are sitting in there and they're all stale for the most part people get paid when people go on them but they're a stale illiquid asset these are assets now that can be monetized and those uh, rates that basically go to those railways to uh, to take shipping back and forth can now be fractionalized out to new owners you've got real estate a ton of it around the world um, you've got carbon, and carbon is a very, very touchy subject for a lot of individuals. I really don't care about how you feel about it. It's a market you can't ignore because of how big it is. And you have uh, certain uh, political powers around the world that are mandating countries to basically become uh, as neutral as possible. So because of the current political uh, climate, you need to understand it's a multiple hundred billion dollar business. You have no choice but to look at it and say, OK, how can I help? How can I be a service provider to that business? That's all. We're just a service provider for that business. And so if, if you know that, uh, you know, you have McDonald's kicking around, whether you like McDonald's or not, if you can basically provide the, the wrappers for the burgers, I, I can definitely tell you, you want to provide the wrappers for the burgers because they're kicking out millions of them. And so it's it's one of those things where you have to look at everything we're doing as we are a service provider for these sectors in order to release illiquid cash that has been on the sidelines has not been able to hit the markets. And if you look at it that way, Mega Lemon is something that is going to change the world forever. And speaking of Mega Lemon, there might be an announcement coming soon about Mega Lemon, a little birdie told me. Uh, there is a major announcement coming. There's actually a lot of <laughs> major announcements coming for Mega Lemon. Like I said, the deals are the deals are definitely stacking up. And and these deals are not, these are deals are not with M's. I will tell you, these deals are with B's. And and I think that's what really gets it exciting because uh, of just the pure volume of transactions will be heading over the lemon chain. And uh, again, these are going to be very strictly sold. <coughs> these are financial instruments. These will not go out to certain jurisdictions around the world. Uh, they will be going through registered investment advisor. But I will tell you, um, they are massive and people buying them have the capital to basically put them and deploy them and get these illiquid assets back to a liquid state for their balance sheets and for everything else. And I'm getting texts right now. We've got uh, uh, stuff happening in Brazil. Guys, we have stuff happening all over the world right now. Um, and so uh, His Excellency likes to text me right, right when I'm in the middle of calls to bring certain things up. But there's all kinds of things happening on the next call as well. We're trying to not, not have it be a week uh, in between these things, but we just get so tied down with uh, with everything. So big, big drops today. It's it's Mega Lemon. It's all things Mega Lemon. Uh, Mega Lemon helps everybody, helps every single project, helps every single L2, helps every single validator. Um, it, it, it is the one thing that basically will support everything.
Did we lose Terry? All right, I we got a real heavy storm, and it uh, <laughs> it flashed me off. Well, normally it's me, so that's totally fine. I I, I sat back, I was like, "Did we lose Terry? How do we lose? How do we lose the host? We're all here." <laughs> yeah, I, I just big flash of lightning went, and the, the all the power went out for a second, and turn off the internet and turn it back on. But now, now, now we're all set. People got too excited by the mega lemon; it was like a lightning bolt to hit. We're all set, so all good. <laughs> I'm sitting here going through the comments myself. Guys, thanks for all the positivity. We got some lemon bombs going up here. Uh, Mega Lemon. Yeah, so Mega Lemon is going to be um, uh, physically launched right after the L1. Uh, the website will be live. You guys will see the tokenization engine. Please please go over and check it out and, and, and play around. You know, obviously some of you guys, or I'm going to say a lot of you guys won't be able to participate directly. But the good news is you're a validator, you're participating in just a different way. And if you are part of a, any type of the free side of the business and the free entities, you're participating just by uh, sharing the other products that you guys can participate in and bring it all as a family. And so, um, you know, don't don't think Mega Lemon's holding you out. Lemon, uh, lemon uh, family is all together, whether you're Mega or not. But uh, but Mega Lemon is going to be the talk of the town for for a lot of reasons, but mainly because of the size of it. Oof. Guys, Mega Lemon, you hear that? So right after L1, this is uh, this is going to be very, very exciting times. It's it, it time is one of those things where it goes super slow and super fast all at the same time. It's a very weird dichotomy, but that is such is time. I saw uh, Lem Lotto pop up in the question several times. Did you want to touch on that? Uh, yeah, so uh, that's actually coming up uh, right with uh, Lem Games. Um, I believe both those are ready to deploy. I got a done done from one. I've got a done done, and I checked for the other. So uh, Lem Motto has not got a done done from me yet, but uh, but it is coming. It, it was very close. Uh, so understand, guys. We have uh, developers all over the world. We've got uh, different languages. We've got different time zones. Uh, we are trying to focus to get these things out, um, but we don't want to have a bunch of things at 90. We want to we want to have these things at 100, get them out, go to the next, and that's what we basically refocus the whole team to do. So um, instead of trying to shotgun it and get everything to 70, 80, uh, you know, 92 percent, we need to get these things over the 100. And so that's what uh, we've been focused on the last two weeks, getting these things out to the public. Well, and I think a lot of people are failing to understand that the core team is very focused on things like the validator dashboard. And once their resources are more freed up, it's easier to bring some of these other things that are stalling out a little bit across the finish line. Everything has to be underwritten by a heavy. And we only have so many heavies and those heavies are 100% on validators and chain right now. And so it does, uh, you know, normally when you have a website or something like that go up, it's no big deal. But these websites are all interactive. They've got uh, monetary uh, backings to them. They have wallets attached to them. They have banking systems attached to them. So they all need a heavy. And so uh, when we were pulling so much weight of all of our heavies to do one, um, one item, and that's the push to get the, uh, the lemon chain up, it does, it does hold stuff back from getting from that 92 to 93% to just get it over the finish line for a final review and getting it out. But that is all part of uh, the migration for September. And I think uh, as we start checking down the validator uh, dashboards and the bridge, I, I know we have a lot of uh, lift ready to pop all these other projects. Speaking of uh, websites, we've seen some great previews and stuff. And uh, the one in particular I was going to ask about was the the main the main Lemon website. Is that is that something we might see this week? 
Yeah, uh, it is something that uh, we believe will have final pushed over. So for um, all things Lemon, um, I believe the site will be up. Um, if not this week, they'll be working through the weekend to get it done. I have a couple uh, heavies coming off to finish off the, the final bit of it uh, for some OT. Um, we have the main website for Lemon Chain. Uh, that's actually been approved uh, for final deployment. That could be happen actually before the weekend. Uh, we've got... Uh, uh, the validator site, that's probably going to be at the same time that the um, the dashboards are done because it needs the estimator in there in order to function. Uh, we've got uh, the white paper for the lemon chain. We've got all the, the light papers that are now in draft form. They have to go to formal form because we're now going to be pushing it over to the lemon chain. So they need to do their migrations. Yes, we have attorneys over time. We've got developers over time. We've got me. Uh, I sleep occasionally. Um, but I understand we, all, the whole team's that way. I think every one of my partners is actually running the same exact hours uh, that I am. No one's taking time off. It is uh, it is a push from a whole team effort to get this thing over the finish line. And so um, it, you guys see me more than you see the partners, but the partners are putting the effort in as well. And uh, even uh, you, you actually have seen His Excellency pop in the chats more. Um, I think I think he's uh, he wants to have more fun being in the chats than than doing some of the other stuff, but he's he's awake anyway. So if he's in between calls, you are going to see him pop in. Uh, it's great to see him. I'm glad uh, he's got that time. I think people like uh, like seeing more than just me. So it's been great. Very cool. Uh, just so expectations are in alignment, and it'll probably cut a lot of noise out of the chat groups, which some, hopefully that's one of the goals on the lives that we accomplish. When would people reasonably expect to see some of that mega lemon money actually starting to flow and hit the tokens themselves? Okay, so this is an expectation game. So let's yeah. make sure everybody has that expectation firmly done. Uh, an average, I'm gonna say an average, an average mega lemon project is gonna be somewhere close to a billion dollars. Okay, so you got a $1 billion asset. That asset has to go through underwriting, has to be appraised, has to be physically put to a custodian, a safekeeping. The title of the asset has to move to the custodian. Then the tokenization engine can basically hit it and either fractionalize it out, put it out to tokens, uh, whatever tokenomics that, that particular asset is going to go through in order to tokenize it, uh, that has to happen. At that point in time, it goes to market. That process does not happen with a blink of an eye. Uh, you are dealing with banks, you're dealing with insurance companies, and you're dealing with real, live, large billion dollar assets. A standard asset is about six months. That is just uh, an average. So if you're talking a billion dollar asset, you're talking six months to basically get that thing from A to Z to sold. Now, it may actually start selling in 90 days. Um, if they have a lot of the title work done, if it's say it's a piece of property, let's say it's a, it's a hotel, for instance, those are a lot easier because they already have a title, it's already developed, it already has um, P&Ls, it already has a lot of assets that a standard traditional bank understands, so they can underwrite it fairly quickly. When you're dealing with other things, like let's just say a, sh a shipping port, for instance, it's not like these things go on the market every day, so the problem is that you have to deal with evaluations, and, and the valuations get very uh, finicky because you're dealing with something so unique, so it goes off of the assets that are on the ground. Well, how do you do that? you got to send a, a specialist to the port to walk through, do an inventory, and then actually start evaluating everything that's there. That doesn't just happen for the blink of an eye. So there are some assets that will happen quicker. So if it's a $100 million hotel, $500 million hotel, a $1 billion hotel, uh, those, are, those are a lot quicker. Um, if you're dealing with uh, even raw land, that's quicker because people understand it. But you have some of these unique items. Um, carbon is one of them, actually. It's... Every every jurisdiction, every region has different qualifications for carbon. So only sp certain specialists can actually go in there and evaluate what you're basically getting. And you basically have to know where you're going to be uh, putting that to market at. Um, so certain assets will be probably 90 days. And I say other assets could be six months. And are there some instances where the, the, the projects and the agreements and or partnerships and discussions have been going on for a period of time in the background, again, for expectation purposes, uh, let's say like a Wynn Hotel or someone with the initials uh, that have some V's in it that might potentially hypothetically land in this calendar year? Is that a possibility just so people have reasonable expectations again? Yes, I believe there are some of those conversations that have not only happened, but I think the names are going to be um, profound and pretty easy to know who they are. Uh, I can also tell you that a lot of uh, announcements are going to happen when the contracts are actually signed in order to tokenize them. 
So you guys are going to see a pretty good runway of what's coming. Even if it is six months out, you may see this billion dollar asset, this half a billion dollar asset, this $5 billion asset. You're going to see these break. And you just have to understand it's just a matter of time. It's just who really cares what the underwriter is doing? Just get it done. They're going to come in so quickly. And I can tell you it is the list is bigger than the, the, the lemon list. Okay. So let me just say that the mega side is actually larger as far as the amount of projects than I have physically in the lemon side. So having said that, you're going to have to have these announcements start popping because we'll be underwriting six, seven, 10, 15, 20 projects all at the same time, probably all for the same four, six, 10 month underwriting window. Cause they're not all going to go underwrite from the same person the same bank, the same custodian. So you can, you know, you can walk and chew gum at the same time, uh, depending on where they are in the region, as long as you're not basically all in one, one sector or one region. So I think it makes sense to announce these things when we have them contracted, when they're coming in, and then we'll basically, you'll be able to see when the money's coming in. So it, it's, it's, it's basically foreshadowing what's coming. And I think that's important for everybody to kind of understand. Uh oh. <laughs> Jay, if you can hear me, your mic, it says your mic is uh, not not connected. Something to do with that, if you can hear me. I can see you in the back. There you are. All right. Good stuff. Pop back. Yeah. Well, a, a question for you. So uh, that's insane, by the way, and super cool that there's actually more, a larger quantity of Mega Lemon projects lining up than, than the other ones on the NFT side. That's a bit mind boggling. Uh, but it... It begs another question then, because the devil's advocate in me says, why would I want to make a PR announcement about some action that might only that might be 90 days out or six months out and allow the whole world to come front run me? Like, it would seem to me like I wouldn't make that announcement unless I was ready to start, you know, at least sequentially rolling the money in. Am I, am I, am I crazy to be having that logical thought? Yep, you're absolutely insane. <laughs> it's about the world. It's not about Terry. No, the, 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 the reality is by announcing them, we're actually getting publicity for other projects coming. And so when you start seeing these names, oh, well, if this person's willing to go and do something on the lemon chain, what's really happening is for every one we announce, we believe we're going to get three to four more. And so it's, it's more of a credibility builder. And I will tell you from a tokenization standpoint, there will be, there will be only one right now. Uh, we have enough in the pipeline to be the largest tokenization engine in the world. And I think that's what a lot of people have been saying. There will be a couple companies that are coming and they've already announced it and their names are big. And yes, you already know it starts with a B and, and they are heading into this space. Okay. Um, that's one that's going to be very tough, but it's about speed to market. And so if we can basically get there and get pushed over the line and become that credible source, this is where it becomes very important. Uh, and so by pushing something out, yes, it is six months out. But if I can push out an XYZ company that is doing this and they have four in the pipe and they're all they're doing all four of them, a large hotel brand, for instance. And if we can basically do that, it's going to look at other hotel brands and say, well, wait a second, if they've already you know, gone through due diligence and they're going on the lemon chain because it's, it's the best thing that's out there. And that tokenization is, is working great. Yeah. We should probably go ahead and go over there and, and see, see, let's price them out. Let's get it done. Well, we're cheaper. I can tell you right now, I guarantee we're cheaper. Uh, we are going to market, I think with a uh, very competitive pricing, we're going to market with the fastest uh, chain right now that, uh, that is inked up and proven it's actually live. Uh, we physically have uh, a great uh, infrastructure for tokenization. That's what the whole thing was built for. Um, and so I think this in, in the, uh, the investor dashboards for that side um, are incredibly uh, built out for a standard traditional uh, hedge fund, sovereign fund. Um, these are investment products. So understand those particular um, applications have been built out for that specific clientele. And so I think by announcing one, we have a four to five X multiplier. And so it's not about Terry. It's not about going under it. It, it is physically about saying, okay, th this is about the world and we just need to get out there. Well, I, I totally agree with you that a speed to market is like 
hypercritical in this case. I think becoming out and dominating before some other solution presents itself is is of utmost importance. And secondarily, I do agree that you're going to attract far more than just by, by getting the word out. I guess what I was thinking is if, if I'm VV and I'm, a, and I'm about to flow big money in, I don't want someone else going in before I would is all I was thinking. But uh, I totally see where your head's at. Someone's got to take the plunge first and that makes fantastic sense. And they probably are further down the road of that entire underwriting process than anyone else. So they'll still probably land there first anyway. So they are. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Got it. Oh, fantastic. Guys, uh, did you guys get a, a few exciting things on there? We still need a little bit more. Can we let this man go get some sleep? Unless you got any burning questions, pop them in the chat. But I think we're going to wind up here. Um, Jay, did you have any other uh, major bombs or pressing issues that were on the back of your mind that you kind of wanted to get out today? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to the chat. I, I, like guys, I've been hit on VBOX on staking for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. <laughs> um, it, is, it is not something that, um, that has been announced on the other side of the live up to your contract. I, I do not believe that will hold. I believe um, that a, a migration to their L1 is going to force that issue. Um, we are trying to get some common sense um, uh, around that issue. Um, common ground, I guess I should say common, say common ground uh, around that issue so we can we can work together and make it the best for the community. Um, and so I would just let the time kind of you know flow through here. And uh, again, uh, we, we need to make sure that the community comes first. And I think that that's you know, something that both sides, we don't agree on everything right now, but I will say that is something we actually do agree on. And so I think this is something that will work itself out. And so um, have patience. Uh, it's it's not something that uh, either one of us can really you know move forward completely on until that's resolved. And so I think it's uh, it's important to kind of get it put behind us like everything else. So be patient, wait for updates, um, and, and we're doing our best. Uh, from my, we're both doing our best to try to get the the customers to come first. Uh, and so I think uh, I think it'll work out. I did get a couple of text messages in. They they just wanted to know if before five before five here in Eastern Standard before the hour on your time, is there any chance Lemflix will be listed so the sellers can go hit that button? <laughs> <laughs> just asking, um, friend. <laughs> so fun fact, uh, it is listed. Uh, fun fact is it got listed on the wrong DAP, and until we uh, physically tell everybody what decks we're going to be on. Um, it's going to be kind of hard to say uh, when it's going to come. So, um, again, the the process for listing, guys, it is the community that is listing it. We have a parameter. We are basically making sure that one of the edits to the uh, to the light paper is, you know, these things need to list by the community and it needs to be fixed at one one hundredth of of uh, LEMX. Having said that, anybody can list anything at any given time. Um, and so, one reason why we may be, you know stopping a lot of chaos right now is I do not want to have everybody go out there with all these projects release and then go pair them with $5 or $10 on both sides of these things and, and cause some people to have catastrophic losses. Okay. And so until the community is, is understanding how the flow works, because you guys are in charge of it all, we just believe it's better to have more education out there. And I just don't have time right now to do a lot of that with everything else going on. And so we're gonna wait till the L1 um, for anything other than LEMX to be fully condoned um, release of the withdrawal. We're gonna probably pause, hit the withdrawal, let everybody withdraw, move to the new chain. And then uh, we do have some, some very friendly, um, they, they end up being pretty large NFT holders. Uh, they took advantage of those free holiday mintings, and I've been in communication with them. <clears throat> they actually reached out to me. They would like to do it. I said, great, um, because if we get a large um, uh, liquidity provider right up front, they're going to make a lot of money uh, by being a little liquidity provider. But everybody needs to understand the positives and the cons of being liquidity providers and then do it if it makes sense to you. But it's part of the game. It's part of it. So sharing it and participating in it and using it, it's on you guys. Uh, the company has no L2 project tokens. So listing it, I couldn't even go list it, guys. I, I'm waiting for you guys to list it so I can go buy. That's, I have none. So understand me listing it is not what's gonna happen. 
Um, but it is for the first several, it is taken care of. We have some uh, very good ecosystem members that understand it. They will be putting it out there. And I believe the liquidity will start growing very, very quickly when people understand how much they can make just by being a liquidity provider and doing what, you know, a good, um, a good NFT holder, you know, an owner and participate in the ecosystem should do. Is there, this may be a, a slightly left field question, but I, I, I could totally <laughs> envision coming up anyway from other people. So why not put it out there? Is there any value in perhaps having the validators run a vote to decide on the date and location potentially for when uh, liquidity starts flying in and the token listing listing actually happens. Any thoughts on that? I hope they always pick our own decks if that's the case. Right. But there'll be some pros and cons to that approach. But I mean, if the validators yes. pick the date for the look, vote, I mean. Look, I think the validators can be used for a lot of things. And I think the validators should be used for a lot of things. Um, I think what the validators should be on a vote for is, you know, how many days do people wait before the withdrawal happens? And I think that goes back out to a free ecosystem. And I don't want to just be on one deck. I think it's actually smart to be on two or three. Why widen it out? Why why just be on Pancake Swap? Why isn't it on Uniswap? Why isn't it on Sushi Swap? Why isn't it, why isn't it on you know Lem Swap or Lem Dex? So I, I think having these things and having the community uh, very much engaged in them makes a lot of sense. I will tell you that there will be a community-driven exchange for the central exchanges. And this is something that we're gonna have a lot more fun with after the L1 is done, because the, um, the roadmap gets us to any exchange we possibly want. And I mean, any of them. We have talked to, I believe it's over a dozen. Um, I lost count, so I'll say it's over a dozen, but I think it's closer to 17, but I'll say it's over a dozen. These exchanges have agreed to list us the second that the fee is paid. And we have several that are willing to basically list us with no fee if we basically get the volumes in that and, and kick them through. And so because we are a decentralized uh, platform, we are actually going to let the users themselves get us to these exchanges. And it's gonna be fun because we could be on, you know, over a dozen exchanges in, in a month if that's what the community really wants. Um, but we're doing something different and i think it's it's going to be really fun to announce that and kind of show people how that's going to work but that comes after l1 um and i'll leave it there but i think the validators have a great uh purpose to have as many of those types of decisions as um as we could possibly put at them and they have the dashboard right in front of them so they can um we how this works guys is is the uh the nonprofit basically can proffer a vote we actually can't take a vote. We proffer a vote, the validators basically sync it and or accept it. Um, and that's what basically brings this thing to decentralized. And so if we pr put up a proper vote, say, hey, look, Lemflix, um, you know, it needs, to, it needs to have a, a withdrawal window. We're looking at doing it on the 15th. They can say, nope, not gonna do it. Okay, great, let's do it on the 20th. Yep, sounds great. And so the validators basically have that power. Um, and I think that's what's great about uh, the blockchain in general and how it's designed. Well, I love it. I think people need to realize that coins are easier to list than tokens. If you have lots of trading volume, followed with a whole bunch of major PR, getting listed anywhere is not its not going to be a problem. It's just about mechanics and then doing it at the right timing. And I think that's the most important uh, right. that most important part, and the rest of it will fall in line. So um, the only other question I, I had, and, and we'll let you go get some sleep, was is there an ETA on when we might see the return of lemon tree? Because I know everyone still totally missed those days when we used to have that one beautiful, smooth app that made everything easy. You know, <laughs> um, we keep changing it. And so uh, I think it would be out already, except we keep adding features to it. And eventually we're going to have to stop adding features to it and just release it. Um, I know that it it was on schedule to basically do for this migration. That's what we're still trying to kick around. So you guys actually see that uh, shortly. Um, we have some very fun um, options in there. It will be premium uh, versions, but it's for the traders. It's for people that want to have uh, notifications at certain spot levels, actually pre-executing, even on a DAX, pre-executing prices for selling or buying when it hits for certain triggers. So you actually have to be there. Um, these types of features, I think, are very 
uh, nice to have, even with DEXs. You basically you can almost treat it like it's a, a centralized exchange, but you're basically doing it all from a, a wallet that you're pre-authorizing um, and, and doing it. And actually, what it's doing is it, it, it's not actually pre-authorizing you to do it with the, the app. It's, it's showing you how to pre-authorize it to the chain. And so uh, it's still you doing it. It's not the app doing it. It's just it's, it's building that bridge for people that don't know how to do it uh, directly through. Very cool. Well, exciting times, friends. It's all coming soon enough. Uh, with that said, let's let's get you off to get some rest. You need some sleep as well. We got to keep you fresh and and good. And we will hopefully get some really exciting stuff still before this week is out. And uh, lots to look forward to in September. So, thank you once again for uh, staying committed. Thank you once again for getting on the live and joining us all and uh, updating everyone. We really appreciate it. And uh, we'll, for everyone who's watching, we'll see you in the chats. Have a good one, friends. Thanks for joining us, and we will catch you all again soon. Good night, everyone.